Okay, so let's start by uh, understanding the user interface of Paraview. So I suppose you already installed Paraview, and uh, if you didn't, you can watch my previous video where I show you how to install it. Uh, Paraview, Paraview is very easy to install, actually. So you can just head up to the website, download it, install it, and you should be ready to go. So in this video here, I will talk about this uh, user interface. So this is the first kind of interface you should be able to see when you open uh, for the first time, right after installing it. Um, but their um, Paraview is very customizable. So uh, sometimes you are doing some online tutorial about some kind of software and you'll see that the interface is not the same than what you have here. So it's totally possible. And I'll show you, um, I show you the windows and the different options. Uh, now, what you have also to consider is that now I'm showing you the windows version, but Paraview is very, um, uh, is, is compatible with various platforms. So uh, you can use it on Mac OS, on Windows, on Linux. Uh, and it can be, it can change a little in function of the OS system you're using on it, but mostly it's, it will be mostly the same. Uh, now, if you are a Salome Meka user, for example, you might notice that uh, in Salome Meka you have a module called Paravis. So Paravis is almost like Paraview. The only difference is that you have a med uh, file reader which is integrated to Paravis. So it's it's basically uh, an upgrade of Paraview with the Med Reader install, but it's it's more or less the same. You can use Paraview also. Um, so let's have a look. So you see that by default you have uh, all these kind of uh, menu bars and uh, toolbar. So the the menu at the top where you have the file, the edit, uh, views, and all that, you will use it a lot. So remember, this is here. This is called the menu bar. Um, then you have uh, the toolbars, which are here. And those toolbars can perform multiple kind of thing. And they are all movable and customizable. So sometimes, you know, the toolbar is not shown or it's not exactly the same position. You can even put it on the side of the screen like that. Uh, well, and the first time it might be a bit overwhelming. What are all those small icons doing? You'll have to learn them one by one by uh, trial and error, I would say. The first time it's a bit overwhelming, but don't worry about that. Uh, we will look at this later. Now, um, here, this is a very important part. It's called the pipeline browser. Uh, it's where basically you have your data which will appear. So when you import some data from a file, your file will appear here. And basically the way to open a file is just to right click and click open and choose your, your file. So I'll show you that later, how to do this. Um, here you have the property panel, also second most important, let's say, because when you import data, you perform some operation, most of the time you'll have to click on apply. So those uh, those changes, those, those things you did, gets applied and changed. So this property window should always be here more most of the time. And then you have other windows like uh, information, um and you have much more that i'll show you right after uh, and here you have the layout so this is the main um this is let's say the 3d view it's called so uh, you can have several 3d views at the same time for example i can have second render view and um you have very small icons here that uh, at the first time i used paraview i never noticed those icons but those are actually pretty important because they allow me to open several views or to, um, to do a lot of things. Those small, very small icons here are actually providing very important uh, services that I'll show you uh, later. So you need to have good eyes to use Paraview. <laughs> okay, so now let me show you how to uh, add new types of uh, windows uh, in your browser. So you have, you have a tab here called View in which you have all the kind of uh, windows that are available. So you see, you have much more. You have animation, color map, that uh, I like very much, the color map, um, Python shell, statistic inspector, time inspector. So sometimes you'll see maybe that in my video, I'm showing you an animation, uh, maybe an FBI model moving or something like that a long time. And then I have this animation view open. 
so you can see each time step uh, moving. But if you don't activate this manually using the view and, and going into those, uh, just activating this animation view, you will never find it. So for beginners, that that's sometimes a bit uh, overwhelming because you look at some tutorial or something, it's like, well, I don't have this on my screen. Well, actually you have it, you just need to go there and to activate it. So it's once you know that, really it becomes uh, very easy. Like the color map, for example, so here I have no model inside. So for the moment, there's no data inside. Not very interesting. Well, I'll show you later on uh, what it is, uh, what it looks like when you have some, some data inside. Um, and this is more or less what you need to know about uh, the user interface in terms of positioning of uh, all the stuff. Now let's uh, let's have a quick look at um, sources. So uh, in parallel, you have two ways basically to, um, to, to, to see things inside. You can either open a data file that you get from another software. So it can be, you know, from a Salome or it can be from uh, any kind of other software which uh, outputs into Paraview format or, or maybe maybe text format. Well, anyway, uh, anyway, because Paraview supports a lot of different kinds of formats. Uh, the second way is uh, to use sources. So sources are some kind of uh, data objects that are created within Paraview directly. So for example, I'll use a cylinder. And you see that when I click on cylinder, it appears here, but it doesn't show anything. And uh, if this is the first time you use it, it might be a bit uh, strange, but you see the button here in the property window has uh, became, be, became green. So you have to click on that to apply. So every action you do in Superview will require you to apply most of the time. So don't, uh, well, don't forget that. And sometimes your property window is, you know, is hidden inside. So uh, it's even more annoying because it's hidden. You don't see it. So you have to go to that window, click and apply. Okay. Anyway, this is my cylinder. Um, so it doesn't, yeah. Uh, if you are thinking like me, uh, you're probably thinking, well, this doesn't look like a cylinder. Well, and that's because um, of the rendering properties. So if you look in the property window, you have all the options here, like the resolution. So if I increase that and I apply that, now it looks more like a cylinder. Um, and you have, so let, let's make that slightly bigger. So we see a bit better what is happening here. Um, and you have ways to represent that. So let's say surface with edges, or um, let's look at the wireframe or let's look at featuring edges, 3D glyph, okay, but this one is not for that. So each, each type of data will have a specific type of representation, which let's say goes better with uh, this. So in this case, let's use the surface with edge and uh, Let's play with the options here, maybe to see what is happening. So I already showed to you the res resolution, and basically I can change, uh, I can change the size of this. So I want to make it bigger or bigger radius or bigger center or all that. I have some options for the light, for the coloring of of this. So by default, I think this is solid color. I think I have to click here if I want to edit the color. Yeah, so now I'm getting uh, different kind of colors. And um, well, all, all of what I'm showing you now actually is not that important, but it's just to show you that when I, what uh, any kind of object you have, which appears into the pipeline browser will have linked uh, properties to it. So and every object is kind of different. So the properties associated to each object will be different. So if you open a data file coming from an FE software, for example, you, you'll get different kind of properties than uh, the properties from a source object like this uh, cylinder. Um, now let's have a look at um, how to, to, let's say, 
how to move this. So to, to move this with the mouse, it's uh, pretty easy, right? Just click on it and uh, rotate that. Now let's have a look at this small uh, toolbar here. Uh, so you can reset the view. You can set up, I think this is for uh, zooming zooming to a specific, I think, a specific area on the model or, um, yeah, uh, this one, yeah, I can zoom like that, I can come back to my, this, or I can look at specific, um, specific axis, or I can rotate that in a specific angle, like this. So those are the, the cameras type of options um, and you have also very small options here like uh, camera undo 3d interaction mode so uh, yeah okay this is to change um, if you want to sit uh, in a 3d way like that or in a 2d more isometric oh this is for the control right when you put it 2d control it will move like that it will pan the model if you use it in 3D, then you'll have different kind of control. So you can change the control in this very small uh, button here. You can adjust the camera or, and I'll talk about all the other options afterwards, because those are uh, to do different kind of stuff. Now, this, you, you can notice you have a small um, system of access, a coordinate system, which is here, uh, X, Y, Z. It's actually uh, pretty useful because it shows you which uh, direction you are going into. So when you investigate a 3D model uh, stresses into a uh, pipe or something like that, well, you know, uh, you know what kind of direction you're looking at. Um, you can set up, you can pick up a center of rotation. So if you want to rotate from this, I think, yeah, now it will rotate from that side so there are various options like that for camera for um for um, zooming changing direction and uh, properties now you should also notice that you remember in this property window i i was showing you how to change the representation well there it's also possible to do here and to this bar here, uh, where you have also the same option. So sometimes it's uh, more convenient to go here uh, rather than to go and dive into this property window. Um, right now, the option here, um, so this is the normals, this is the coordinates, the t chords magnitude. So I have no you know, FEA results to show you right now in this model, so it's not very interesting. But if you're in Salomon Maker, for example, then you, you'll get uh, you'll get your, the details here. And because it's always better with data, now let me show you how to import some data into uh, Paraview. So you basically right-click open, you find a file which can be imported. So in my case, I have this VTU file that I calculated with OnScale. Um, and those are a lot of other formats that can be supported. So I, and you see, I have to apply also. And by the way, there is a function which is called auto apply changes. So in the toolbar. So if you click on that, you, do, you won't have to every time have to click on the apply button. So that's pretty useful stuff. Okay, now you see that I've loaded this model. And this time I have some, uh, I have some total displacement results. Uh, on this pipe model, the, so I can, it's a bit better looking than uh, just the source cylinder, or I have some displacement like that in different directions, or I can look at uh, stresses like this. So you see that now I can still use those options here to change the view, and I'm able to visualize uh, the meshing of the model right now uh, inside a power view. And the property window is a bit different than what I have previously. I have this window, which basically um, gives me the different type of results which are currently stored into my, uh, my file that I imported, my VTU format file. 
you can say VTU is the standard ParaView type of format. Uh, so generally, uh, you have to find a way to convert your model into VTU format if you want to, to play with ParaView. Um, and something interesting to note is that you see there are small cell or, or points. And the, the difference with that is that you're looking at cell data or points data. Uh, so it's slightly it's a slightly different. Um, uh, so let me show you, for example, a few other stuff. So let's come back, for example, to the surface view without the mesh. And let's have a look at how to change the color scheme. So something I really like is to change the color map. So first you need to activate the color map editor. And you see that um, here you have various options regarding the color. You can change the number of colors here, let's say 12. And because I have activated the auto apply, now I don't need to, to click on apply, it will automatically update. So now I have a view which is like that more discrete of uh, the number of colors. So you can change the number of color you want. Um, and you can change also, so, there are some presets available. So I like very much this feature. You click on the presets and you see you have, for example, this jet. Let's close that and it will look like this. And um, so this is basically used for CFD analysis when you do this or rainbow uniform. This is like this. or cold and hot, generally more for thermal kind of analysis. Oh, this one is, um, people like this one for thermal analysis, the black body radiation type. That's pretty cool. If you're doing a thermal analysis and you are uh, you like the, the old way to display this this kind of uh, results, this is, this is for you. Now you have more advanced type of uh, colors like that, you can change the range of uh, data like this, the curve. Well, I usually don't really need to play with, with that. I just leave it um, with the initial presets. So I think I can come back to yeah, initial presets by clicking on this button here. You can also uh, customize your own, uh, your own visualization legend and all of that and save your presets to, to a file so that every time you, you load, it will use your uh, your own presets. Now, what is useful to, to notice also here is those uh, small options, which are also here in the toolbar, which are to rescale the data range. So you can um, rescale automatically if you click here, or you can rescale uh, with a certain uh, number. So this is pretty useful in, in FEA, especially where, for example, I want to rescale to um, let's say smaller the to to smaller range uh, and now i'm getting something like this so very very useful to 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 know how to use this and if you have time increments so you'll have a set of uh, steps and you have to use this one to rescale the data over all the time steps so that's i'll show you that later on when i will have a model with a time increment Okay, so let's reset that to the basic colors and, um, oh yeah, uh, and um, this one too, I think. Let's rescale, um, it should be automatic rescale, okay. Then if you click here on rescale to data range, then it comes back to initial. Uh, one more thing uh, I want to show you is, um, you have the ability to uh, inactivate some data. So if you go into this property window and some data inactivate, the data won't be available anymore here. So this is also sometimes a trick because um, you might find, well, my data is not shown into this. How can I look at them? And then you, when you look at your property window, you see that your, your data are actually inside your file, but they are not activated. So that's why they're not uh, showing up. So if I activate that here 
And remember, I activated the auto apply, so that's why it's automatically applying. Otherwise, you have to click here. Now, uh, they are your different types of results automatically show up. So, yes, that's it. One more thing, uh, let's have a look at the different views again. Uh, if you want to open a second view, and uh, could be a second render view, because you have different types of views, so I'll, I'll show you that in a, another video. Um, and let's say you want, so there is nothing here, why? Because my model is hidden, as you can see here. So there is a small eye here, very small, that you have to click to actually be able to visualize your uh, your model. And by default, it appears in this scheme. So you can have two types of different visualization. So here I can be looking at uh, the X displacement. And uh, in this one, I could be looking at uh, the, the Y displacement, for example. Now, um, something pretty cool is that you can link the cameras. So if you right click in your screen and it will be, it will tell you, would you link to the camera? Um, and then click on the other window where you want to link. And when you will move one model, your other model will move at the same time. Uh, so pretty cool stuff, which will allow you to have different kind of representation. And this is even more useful when you use it in combination with various filters, which will allow you to, to do various kind of post-processing on, uh, on your model. So, and that's what we will be talking about in the next video. So. Keep watching uh, to know more about filters, which is one of the, uh, the biggest strengths of Paraview, uh, to be able to apply various kind of filters to do various kind of things. So see you in the next video, I hope. And if this video was useful, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, helping to recommend this video to, to your colleagues or your friends. Uh, so thank you very much in advance.